Hello, welcome back. It is now 12.30 p.m. October 5th. I'm Brian Medina with your Cardinal News. And I'm Gabrielle Estrada. On September 30th, the Village hosted their 6th annual Autumn Fest in order to help residents by fundraising. Here's Amanda Cunha with more on the event. Hey Cardinals, we're at the Autumn Fest at the Incarnate Word Village where many of our senior residents have come to celebrate the start of fall with the help of many volunteers around the San Antonio area. Let's go speak to some of those volunteers. We're with the Pre-Pharmacy Association. Um, I'm the secretary for PPA, so uh, we come every year to the village to help out in any way we can. Usually it's setting up festivals like this. And we kind of just mix where we go. And it works out pretty well. Um, this is my first time like actually volunteering here. I just started, and I'm really excited. And I came to volunteer because I just like helping out and being around good energy. Um. I saw where our residents, uh, when they exhausted their funds, they would have to move out, you know, they have to go on a, a subsidy Medicaid or something, they have to go to another facility. After being here like 10 years or so, this is their home. So I felt like we should do something to help them, you know, stay here in their home. So I decided to start the Autumn Fest. For UIW TV News, this is Amanda Cunha. It's truly a beautiful thing that they are doing so much to help the residents. Thanks, Amanda. This past weekend at A&M San Antonio, a comedy show called The Gridiron was held, which many journalists took a jab at making fun of politicians. Here's Maddie Aguilar with more on the event. Hey, Cardinals. Do you like SNL and enjoy comedy? Well, maybe next year you won't want to miss what's called The Gridiron Show, put on by local journalists. There was a skit about Jeopardy. Essay! Now, we have with us three distinguished citizens of our great city. Let's meet them right now. Yeah, well, you are helping those students get their degrees, so think of that, and maybe just one day we will have working professional journalists in San Antonio. And of course, President Trump himself. America will be great again, and everyone and everything will be beautiful. Which had some great laughs. This play also raises money for communication arts students. The scholarship is um, an initiative of the San Antonio Society of Professional Journalists, the San Antonio chapter. We give out um, scholarships to San Antonio, uh, San Antonio students, but they can be students anywhere in the state so long as they have a residence here in San Antonio. This past summer, a few of our own classmates received some of these scholarships as well. It started in around the mid 1980s, a good way for you to uh, revive if you want more information on how to apply or just even catch this great show next year, just go to www.spjsa.org. This is Maddie Aguiar for UIW-TV News. Wow, I'm so jealous and it's so awesome that so many of our very own Cardinals participate in this event. Thanks, Maddie. Now we switch to what's going on here and around the world thanks to CNN News Source. Late Sunday night in Las Vegas, Nevada, concert growers at the Route 91 Harvest Festival fell victim to the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. The shooter was 64-year-old Stephen Paddock, a retired and twice-divorced accountant from Mesquite, Nevada. He shot the 22,000 attendees at the Con Country Music Festival from above on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. He had 23 weapons in his hotel room, including wife, rifles and several pounds of ammonium nitrate a material that is used to make explosives. A witness said the gunshots lasted for, quote, 10 to 15 minutes, unquote, which left 59 people killed and more than 500 injured during the rapid gunfire. As authorities made contact with Paddock outside of his hotel room, he was still alive, but when they made it inside, he had already committed suicide. Police believe that Paddock acted alone and there were no warning signs of previous criminal activity other than traffic violations. Paddock's living girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, was out of the country in the Philippines visiting family during the shooting. Paddock had recently bought her a ticket, so she had not planned her own trip. She released a statement via her lawyer on Tuesday, and it said, quote, It never occurred to me in any way whatsoever that he was planning violence against anyone, unquote. 
Stanley has voluntarily traveled back to the U.S. to aid the FBI and the Las Vegas Police Department and said, quote, I will cooperate fully with their investigation. Anything I can do to help ease suffering in any way, I will do. Please respect my privacy and my family's privacy, unquote. The FBI has determined that they have found no connection with the international terrorist group, but have not determined Paddock's motives. Our hearts go out to the 59 victims and their families during this time. This week, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders went on CNN to talk about some of the events that have unfolded this week. During the interview, he was pressed about President Trump's statement about NFL players kneeling during the national anthem. Senator Sanders had this to say. Let's talk about why players are doing what they're doing, and that is that we have a real crisis in criminal justice in this country. The United States of America has more people in jail than any other major country on earth. Uh, we have communities now where kids are being picked up uh, for smoking marijuana, getting police records, which makes it difficult for them to get the jobs that they need. So I think what the players are talking about is the need for criminal justice reform, the need for police department reform. They have the right to make that point, and I appreciate their standing up for what they believe. Since this interview, Senator Bernie Sanders has continued to back up his statement on this progressive issue. In other news, Iraq's former president, Jalal Talabani, died at the age of 83 this past Tuesday. Talibani was Kurdish, making him the first non-Arab president. He served as president from 2005 to 2014 and was elected head of state in the wake of the United States-led invasion of the country. During his time as president, he oversaw the implementation of a new constitution that truly strengthened the autonomy of the Kurdish region of Iraq. Don't go anywhere, we will continue with Entertainment Scoop right after this. Hey there fellow Cardinals and welcome to UIW TV Entertainment where we keep you updated on what's happening on our campus and around the beautiful San Antonio area. I'm Stephen Tobin. You may have noticed that parking near the Natatorium was a bit limited about two weeks ago. And if that wasn't enough to notice, maybe it was the giant ring. On Wednesday, September 20th, students gathered in the Natatorium parking lot to watch and enjoy a bunch of dudes in spandex and masks wrestling each other. I'm talking, of course, about La Lucha. La Lucha was the first of its kind and it was put on by CAB in acknowledgement of Hispanic Heritage Month. Students were able to enjoy intense battles. I mean, I wasn't even there and I felt the impact of how intense it was. There was also tasty food and fire music. Let's go with Brittany to take a look. Hey Cardinals, we're here at the Natatorium parking lot where CAB's having its first event of the year, La Lucha. Let's check it out and get to wrestling. I'm here with the president of CAB and we're going to ask her a few questions. So what are y'all doing this event for? Um, so basically this is our first event of the school year. Um, so CAB just puts on fun and free events for students on campus. And what made y'all choose this wrestling event? So in our brainstorming process, we kind of just throw things out there that are su super ridiculous. And one of them was a Lucha Libre wrestling match. And I actually wanted to do it um, for this school year. Um, we were going to do it later, actually, in the, the semester. But um, since it's Hispanic Heritage Month, we decided to do it as our first event. Yeah. So we're here with Minnie Matas, who is a wrestler in La Lucha for the CAB event. Now, can you tell us about your organization? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, my organization is Lucha Libre. I have been doing it for the past five years, and it is a fast growing loving sport. Now, what is this that you have in your hands? This is my favorite choice of weapons. You know, whoever gets in my way will get it across their face or across their stomach. So beware, be ready. Okay. 
La lucha has come to an end. I had a blast and I hope you all enjoyed the fight. Thank you, Cardinals. I'm Brittany Mireles for UIW Entertainment. It goes without saying that La Lucha kept students at the edge of their seats and entertained. But life isn't always mass men beating each other with pipes. It brings me great sadness to say that the nation's Silk Road, Pipe Adorn, Casanova, Hugh Hefner passed away on September 27th at the age of 91. Let's take a moment of silence. Hugh founded Playboy in 1953 with only $600 of his own money, and from there built a multi-million dollar entertainment empire. He glamorized the bachelor lifestyle and helped spur the sexual revolution of the 1960s. Although some say he was a relic of a sexist era, Hugh certainly left an impact on society. On a brighter note, let's talk about Queen B. Beyonce recently released a remix of the song Mi Gente, originally written by J Balvin to celebrate heritage and roots, as well as erasing barriers of race, color, continents, genre, and language. With a bit of her magic, Beyonce suddenly transformed the meaning to rising up, coming together, and slaying the impact the hurricanes have had. B is donating all profits made from her remix toward hurricane relief charities that will aid Houston, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and other effective Caribbean islands. If you haven't heard it, sit back and enjoy the show. Si el ritmo te lleva a mover la cabeza y empezamos como es. Mi música no discrimina a nadie, así que vamos a romper con lo mío. Todo se mueve. La fiesta la llevo en mis pies. That song can get anyone dancing. By listening to her song and going to Beyonce.com slash relief efforts, you too can donate to the places in need of support at this time of misfortune. Now, let's check out the Cardinal calendar for events that are coming up. On our campus, we have the Oktoberfest on the 6th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This will be located at the Student Center Pub. Next, on Crafty Tuesday, you get to paint a rock from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. At the UIW Engagement Center, and lastly, live. This Friday, there is going to be live music from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Red's Pub. It's October, and San Antonio knows it. Fight Fest at Six Flags will be open until October 31st. Next week, we have a Halloween-themed Comic-Con, which is going to be located near the Alamo Dome. And I heard that the original crew from the Nightmare on Elm Street will be reuniting at this event. You don't want to miss it. And lastly, we celebrate Dia de los Muertos. This celebration will be held in the historic Art Village from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on October 28th through 29th. Well, Cardinals, that's all for this week. I'm your host, Stephen Tobin. Stay tuned for UIW TV en Español. Hola, Cardenales. Soy María José Casillas. Y estas son las noticias de UIW TV en Español. Una masacre en la ciudad de Las Vegas cobró la vida de 58 personas el pasado fin de semana. El ataque, en cual ocurrió durante un concierto de música country, dejó al menos 500 personas lesionadas. El presidente de los Estados Unidos, Donald Trump, clasificó dicho ataque como un acto de pura maldad y descubrió al agresor como un individuo muy, muy enfermo. Trump envió sus condolencias a los familiares de las víctimas y deseó la pronta recuperación de los heridos. Igualmente, él reconoció la labor de los oficiales presentes en la escena diciendo que los policías estaban en la línea de fuego para ayudar a la gente y averiguar de dónde venían los disparos. Durante su discurso, Trump negó a hablar sobre las leyes de armas de fuego en los Estados Unidos, diciendo que dicho tema será abordado con tiempo. En otras noticias, Puerto Rico sigue destrozado semanas después de la llegada de Huracán María. De acuerdo a reportes, el 90% de los hogares en la isla sufrieron daños y más de 3 millones de personas siguen sin energía eléctrica. Hasta el momento se ha declarado la muerte de 16 personas y que 44% de los puertorriqueños no tienen acceso a agua potable. Algunos supermercados, bancos y gasolineras han abierto sus puertas. Sin embargo, las escuelas continúan cerradas. El presidente Trump 
visitó Puerto Rico el pasado martes 3 de octubre. Durante su visita, Trump aplaudió la labor de los habitantes de la isla y repartió donaciones a los damnificados. Se estima que el costo del daño total es de 95 mil millones de dólares. En noticias internacionales, una jornada de elección se tornó caótica y violenta, dejando al menos 900 personas heridas en España. Dicha crisis política, la cual fue causada por el disputado referéndum independista en Cataluña, contó con la participación de más de 2 millones de personas. Cifras finales revelaron que el 90% de los votantes estuvieron a favor de independizarse de Madrid. De acuerdo a las autoridades catalanas, la baja participación que fue causada por la represión y las medidas tomadas por el gobierno español para impedir la votación. Reportes indican que los policías confiscaron papeletas electorales y sellaron colegios y otros lugares que se iban a usar como centros de votación. Durante la jornada se reportaron disparos de balas de goma y violencia en contra de protestantes y votantes. Hasta el momento, partidos opositores han demostrado su descontento con el gobierno de Mariano Rajoy de tratar de impedir el voto de la fuerza. Bueno, cardenales, estas son todas las noticias en español por el día de hoy. Mi nombre es María José Casillas y ahora los dejo con el segmento de deporte. Welcome Cardinal sports fans, I'm your sports reporter Kathleen Sundin. Let's start off with the first home football game of the season. It was a hard fought game against Abilene Christian University that unfortunately resulted with a 45-20 loss for the Cardinals. Benson Stadium was packed for the game. Darius Montgomery ended up blocking two punts which resulted in Cardinal touchdowns and a sack. He was named Southland Conference Special Teams Player of the Week and also Cryotherapy Cardinal of the Month. Great work Darius. Our next home game is on the 14th of October. Don't forget to come out and support our Cardinals. The Cardinals have had some tough rivals in soccer. The women's team played the regular season champions, Central Arkansas. Unfortunately, they lost 0-1 in overtime. They will be out of town for their next three games. The men's team suffered a tough loss against UMKC. They weren't able to recover from an early game goal. Their next two games are at home against Utah Valley on the 6th and Seattle University on the 8th. Let's see how our women's volleyball team is doing. Take it away, Brittany. Hey, Cardinals, we're here at the volleyball game where they're playing against McNeese University. Their current record is one win, two losses. Let's check out some highlights from the game. So what are your thoughts on the game today? I mean, of course, every loss sucks, but I mean, I feel like we put in maximum effort. Our bodies are a little tired from all the five set matches and stuff, but I mean, we we uh, made too many errors, to be honest. And what are you going to do on Saturday's game to get that win? Uh, well, first, I'm going to start off with recovering my body as well as everybody else on the team. We're going to come out, we're going to play the best of our abilities and hopefully come out on top of the win. So what are your thoughts on today's game? I thought overall we played really well. Obviously, we didn't get that win that we wanted, but... Um, we know we can play better and we know we could have beaten them, so it's just next time we got to do what we got to do. So what are you going to do on Saturday to get ensure that win? Um, I think next time we just got to play fearless. We were kind of timid, kind of made our own errors, and that's kind of how they beat us. But next game we just got to go all out and then we'll, we can definitely win. After close matches, the women fell short three sets to one. I'm Brittany Mireles reporting for UIW TV Sports. Thank you, Brittany. On the 3rd of October, the men's golf team ranked 5th in the Skyhawk Classic. John Hill finished 14th overall, shooting a plus 4. The women's team ranked 5th in the Bearcat Women's Invitational as well. Madison Furking finished in the top 10, shooting a 227 after 3 rounds. Way to go, Madison! Check our social media for home game updates and scores, as well as online at cardinalathletics.com. That's all from UIW Sports. I'm Kathleen Sundin. Good afternoon, Cardinals. I'm meteorologist Jillian Goosey here with your Cardinal weather update. So 82 degrees outside, 7 mile an hour wind. So there's not much relief to that heat and that humidity that we do have today. So 72% humidity, it's almost when you walk outside, you can feel the stickiness in the air. But these clouds are going to disappear 
as the sun comes out later on throughout the day. And for our satellite radar, so what's going on around the United States? So we have some uh, rain here in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and here in Oklahoma City. So this is, we have that cold front that's bringing in lots of rain, but cooling down the temperature. So it's feeling a lot like fall everywhere else in the country, but here in Texas. So our, our temperatures around the state of Texas. So 68 Amarillo, this is where that low pressure is, and this is where the cold front is that's going to be moving in the cooler air later on next week. So that's unfortunate for us. So we're still going to have a hot weekend. When we start our work week next week, we're going to see a significant drop in temperatures. So 86 in Corpus Christi and in Brownsville, 82 in El Paso, and 84 Houston in San Antonio, downtown, you're coming in at 82. So how am I going to be able to plan my weekend, and am I going to be able to stay outside? The answer is yes. So we have this Gulf moisture you can see by these red lines here. This is going to bring in lots of humidity into our area, but also sun. And so when you go outside, you're going to have a lot of sunshine and able to do a lot of things, but just make sure you're prepared because it's going to be hot. And we have this high pressure that's sitting over us. This is what's going to be causing these high temperatures. So we're going to be watching this cold front um, later on into next week, and this is what we're going to be hoping for to make it feel a little bit like fall here in San Antonio. And for your seven-day forecast, so 86, today we're going to top out 10% chance of rain. So this is why we still have that humidity and those hot temperatures that will still um, cause a chance of rain here in San Antonio. But Friday, as we have that high pressure, the air begins to dry, so we're still going to be hot. 86 on Friday, 88 Saturday, 89 on Sunday. So, so we're going to still be feeling like summer this weekend. And when we start our work week next week, 90 degrees. So definitely feeling like summer. But look, 90 to 79 and then 78. This is that cold front that's going to be moving through our area. This is what's going to bring a relief to our temperatures. So I'll, of course, I'll keep you updated as we move on into the weekend, into the work week next week. But I'm meteorologist Jillian Goosey. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for tuning into our broadcast today. Keep up with what's going on at UIW-TV by following us on Instagram, Twitter, and liking us on Facebook. Have a great weekend, and make sure to tune in in two weeks for the latest news from in and around campus. I'm Gabrielle. And I'm Brandon Medina, signing, signing off. off.